Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we hope to get flung back into orbit around Leith uh, with the rescue vessel Puck 8 and uh, her rescuer. But we've got a few problems as far as getting her to 10 kilometers that it takes to get over there. And I'm thinking maybe we could pull uh, one of these solar panels onto the rover. But it might, as somebody suggested taxiing the the plane over and we do need to review store data and make sure that we do have the leaf stone analysis so that's okay so that is as expected um eva report we transmitted i think so yeah let me try and grab a solar panel and see if that can replenish the rover's power taxiing could be doable but i'm just curious to see whether this will work so uh let's just go with it and it's too much for her to carry like that. We'll just have it float for a bit. Okay. As long as her head's got clearance. I don't think we need the antenna. Okay. Very convincing blast of her tool. And a board. So... Um, we are recharging, but I think the wheels are just too, and I don't know if it can actually take the slope or not, because it's a pretty drastic slope down from here. That's another problem with using the, yeah, I think our front wheels are a problem if we can't repair them. Hmm. And also our electric charge goes away like immediately. But, all right, maybe we can move the these wheels to the front. I'm just cu doing this out of curiosity. So, what can we do about this? Operation in progress cannot detach. Oh, I guess because of the brakes it can't detach. Okay. Well, I guess we'll try and release the brakes and hope it doesn't go... <laughs> okay, uh... Leave seat. No, it still says operation in progress. Maybe it's the movement. Yep, I don't think that's gonna work well. Shall we try... the plane? I think we should try the plane. If I could remove those wheels and put these in front, then maybe we'd have a good way to go. But I think the busted wheels in front effectively prevent us from moving properly. So our plane is has got rocket engines, though. <laughs> if it had the jet engines, that'd make me feel a little bit better about moving towards Puck 8. But rocket engines, hmm. Okay, board. Got lots of fuel, really. Now I stored the the science, so we better pay attention to that. Okay. I'm gonna use A and D to steer. Now we'll need more thrust to go up the slope. I don't know how fast I can go safely. I wish I had like KAS or some way to transfer the fuel, you know, just a pipe would do. I don't think Flong can attach a tank to the other thing. I mean, it's not that short on fuel, but it's a shame not having the ability. But yeah, it is definitely better than using the rover. We are in render range. Why do we even need rovers when we have planes? <laughs> I guess they're more efficient. Well, I'll just let it coast to a stop here. And Flong can go ahead and go the rest of the way. We'll make sure to take the data. All right. Right. Oh, don't. Please use the ladder this time. 
Okay. Uh, do we have to slap a ladder on here? Or did I actually remember? I don't think I remember the ladder. Or it somehow left. I can't jump that. Alright, alright. So, I mean, Flong can't jump that. Let's grab a ladder. Well, let's just toss it onto the ground and nudge it. I guess we can just be patient. No, oh, it's getting dark. Or I think maybe a cloud is... Oh, well, I don't know. There we go. Okay, I guess we could pull the ladder inside with us so it's not like an extra part. Could help. Okay, board. Alright, so it's not outside. Uh, we're pointed roughly polar. Not very well recharged right now. Boy, this has a lot less fuel than the other thing. That that the uh, other vehicle has like twice the amount. It's gotten gloomy. It's gotten really gloomy. I mean, we definitely need to retract that. I just have a strong sense of ill foreboding right now. We'll go ahead and go polar, I think, because that's. the path of least resistance right now. I don't know what kind of speed we need to get off the ground. Uh, we are airborne. Okay, let's see about picking up speed at a relatively low level. We're actually pretty high up because of the mountain, but... We could try... well, let's not go retrograde. That doesn't really matter, does it? Oh, let's get our gear in, huh? This is super efficient now. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it like this, I think. What do we have around here that we might want to rendezvous with? I guess the space plane claw is a thing. Fuel transfer vehicle J is something, but that's equatorial. We're going 500 plus now. Let's take a look at the apoapsis and periapsis. The atmosphere is having weird effects. I don't think Scatter is working quite right at the moment. I don't know what to think about this. Yeah, if Scatter is definitely doing something weird right now. It's clipping too much. But anyway, the important bits are working. I think we should level out a bit, so that we don't run out of air. Going pretty well so far. But uh, thrust is going down on the air breathing. We definitely carried way too much oxidizer. Our speed is going down. And our acceleration is going down. Um, I don't know. I mean, our apoapsis is going up pretty well, though. We can probably leave it going like this for a bit. But we've got negligible char uh, thrust right now. Charge is also a bit of a problem, but... Okay. 
We are now in rocket mode. I don't feel like fighting against stuff too much. 70 kilometers will do fine, even if we get some drag here. I think we're good. This is looking pretty icy, actually. Uh, whatever texture they've got there. Very icy texture. Are we, like, at the pole or something? Not quite yet, no. That's not land. That's supposed to be the water. Okay, let's finish up orbit. Well, this was more of a success than I, I thought I would have to reload at some point. And um, so far so good. Didn't have to. First try worked. Up, flip, and that's good enough for me. 69 by 66. And let's get the solar panel out. We could have dumped the parachutes, but actually... I guess Flon can repack them or something. Anyway, they're worth money to bring back. Okay, we probably won't be charging up as much as we want to. Well, Jewel is blocking the sun right now anyway. Now the question is, what we do about this in order to get it back home? And maybe the best thing to do would be to get that space plane claw, the one that pushed us over here, topped off, get to claw us, and then push us back. So we've got this, and it's basically in the water. Doesn't have a whole lot going for it right now. But it's still alive. We have also around here this fuel transfer vehicle, which might be able to get stuff from the Paul drilling unit. Oh, it did a little puff there for some reason. This uh, has some delta V. It could probably get to Paul. It's no problem. So it just needs to dock with the drilling unit, top off on fuel. The problem, the reason why, it, we should have moved the docking port from the other space plane over to Puck 8. Then uh, Puck 8 wouldn't need to rely on the claw vehicle. But Puck 8 right now I don't think has a docking port. Yeah, no docking port. So. Um, so we have to do an extra step, but, well, then the fuel transfer vehicle, well, the fuel, uh, sorry, the, the claw thing can claw the fuel transfer vehicle. It's complicated. First, let's go to Paul and verify that we have stuff to pick up. Now, of course, there's also the matter of needing to wait a while for the transfer opportunity home. This has 1,228 liquid fuel at the moment. It's got a little bit of, oh, it's got a lot of ore. So let's convert the ore. Let's go ahead and do that. And mainly to liquid fuel would be nice. Okay. Uh, wow, it converted that liquid fuel really quickly. What? Isn't, wasn't that really quick? Did you? Oh, maybe it updated and it had been doing it all the time. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, I mean, you'll have to re rewind the video and see. Uh, it filled that up with suspiciously quickly, is all I'm saying. Um, we'll probably want some monoprop too, but this doesn't have any monoprop prop containment, so that'll have to be when something else visit visits it. Okay, well, somehow we got liquid fuel, so that's good. Let's send the fuel transfer vehicle over. I'm not trying to fill any of, their, of the other contracts right now. I just want to bring that life stone back. Because otherwise we had, I think, another contract for uh, explore, uh, return to Kerbin from a flyby of Paul. And we would like to do that, but it's not super convenient. We might try. It depends on how much Delta V this whole refueling deal gives us. There's a 4.6 degree inclination difference, but we could probably fix that. Yep, there's an encounter right there as a matter of fact. Okay, and once we encounter it, do we have enough to... So the correction burn there is 129. And let's just say we capture like this. Of course we want it to be lower, but... 
I just want to get a sense of how much it's going to cost. 500. So all together we have enough. So let's just proceed. We have oxidizer that we don't super duper need. Unfortunately, there's no place to put it. And go. Ah, too much more. Uh, we had a very good encounter before. There is a Paul encounter. Okay. So, we want to get a rendezvous with the driller ship. Okay, well, we'll do this burn first. Okay, go. I must keep in mind communication at this point, though. We have a lot of it around here, but not an infinite amount. Well, according to our official Delta V figure, we'll have enough. I might as well fix the inclination while I'm there. Okay, one kilometer is fine. That's a tighter than necessary capture, but we should be able to get ourselves to what we where we need to go to refuel. This thing has a capacity of 7,000 liquid fuel, though. Okay, wait, did we... Oh, we have to go all the way around first? Oh, all right, all right. It's not on this pass, it's on the next one. Oh, oh god, there's an encounter with Hilo. No, you should have showed me that beforehand. Ah, uh, the lies, the lies and deceit, I swear. Okay, well, the best I seem to be able to do is to pull us away from Tylo and sort of retain some sort of approach there. Either way, we're going to have to do sort of an inclination thing to pull away from Tylo. It's very inconvenient. Um, and I do not know I am no longer confident that we have enough Delta V Especially if we can't dump the oxidizer here, but I didn't have a fuel dump valve So this is going to be tough. We might want the All drilling unit to come rendezvous with us or something It's going to be complicated. Anyway All right uh, let's just do this right now. The 20 minute delay doesn't help anything. So, it'll be in front of us at closest approach. We'll try for the next orbit around. Maybe if we do something here instead. It's probably a bad idea. Uh, yeah, it'll probably cost too much. There's an encounter. Well, we'll check. Okay, so 221 here, 362 there. We have it <laughs> again. Once again, we have what we need. And this time, there shouldn't be anything getting in our way, right? Right? We're basically doing an awful radial burn. Okay, seems close enough there. All right. Okay. All right, so that is what we'll do, and we'll be pretty much out of fuel except for mod propellant. Plenty of oxidizer we don't need, but still. All right, approaching Paul finally. Okay, ignition. It better be a docking port. <laughs> uh, where are you, docking port? Okay, all right, here we go. It's a bit of an angle, but it should be okay. Don't make this hotter than it needs to be. Ah. Uh. All right, there we go. Okay, so... 
Well, let's just uh, start monoprop conversion. Okay. Well, it's not suddenly doing it. Guess that's good. Oh, we are out of communication temporarily. There we go. We got it back. Everything is well. The liquid fuel is topped off. So let us separate. Good thing this had extra radiator capacity to share. Okay, RCS. All right. Well, we've got six thousand eight hundred and thirty-six meters per second. We should be able to get to lathe. Well, it takes 600 to go back, so that's not thrilling, but it's it's okay. Okay, go for Paul departure. Okay, we've got a lathe encounter. Let's see what's going on with that. So we can capture pretty easily. But the plane change is going to be a pain. Hold on a sec. Uh, let's set that as a... Oh no! The Paul Driller... Uh, not the Paul Driller. The Space Plane and the... Uh, whatchamacallit. Space Plane Claw are going in opposite directions around Lathe. I forgot about that. Oh shucks. Maybe we shouldn't do this. <laughs> um... This suddenly seems like a horrible idea, and also opposite from the way we're going right now. Well, we will be going. I mean, is it possible to flip all the way around? Maybe. I'd rather do that around a different moon instead of lathe. So how much is this going to cost? A thousand right there, just to do the plane change. And that's not a, the biggest plane change. Obviously, we've now got a bigger one. Well, I'll get this over to that space plane claw and let it take its fuel. But uh, I think we're going to have to come up with a different solution here. Just a little bit of bad planning. A lot of haste in trying to get our Kerbal off of Kerbals off of Lathe. And not enough planning ahead of time to get them going in the right direction. Unless we use this to run it. Well, still. It's a little bit late now. Well, we'll have an intersect point, but can't say I, I'm thrilled about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not like going directly to Puck 8 would be any better, though. Okay, well, the other thing has a claw on and everything, so let's see if it can seal the deal here. Oh, we don't have comms with this. Oh, that's complicated. We have comms with this. This got bigger antennae. Oh, it just did. Hopefully on a semi-permanent basis, maybe? Still shows the RCS effects when I'm not actually using RCS, I'm in time warp. That seems to be a bit of a flaw. Well, this side looks trimmer. It contains 3560 liquid fuel altogether. It sort of needed all of that in order to make the transfer, didn't it? But then the space plane has some left. It's complicated. Well, I'm going to leave this here for now. I'm not too sure that trying to use this and flipping its orbit around in order to get to Puck 8 is going to be feasible. 150 degree inclination difference. Nah. Um, the Part of the problem is Leif's SOI. It might be easier to like exit Leif's SOI and come back in at a different inclination than try to flip it in here. That might be a better way to go. I'll have to think about that, but that requires some serious plotting. Uh, for now, we've gotten it to this situation at least. 
The Puck 8 is in orbit and Flong is no longer on the surface of Lathe, but exactly how we're going to get our Kerbals back home is going to be a story for a different day. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.